How's it going everybody? It's Mystical and I'm back with another ICR mod video. Uh, hopefully you've seen the other ones already, or at least the overview uh, for the mod so you know how to install it and all the features and options. But if you uh, saw that one and noticed I talked about how you can paint on the driver display interface and some other features that are focused for the template, that is basically what this video is all about. So whether you're new to painting, this will probably be really useful, or you're a veteran painter that's been painting on you know tons of mods over the years, you still might find this useful since it is a little different. And also, you know, there's specific layers and stuff that I made for the template that may be a little confusing, and hopefully this will clear anything up. And also some other little uh, tidbits of information that I'll have at the end, so we'll basically jump right in. Uh, I'm just going to choose the Pontiac G8 template, but basically it's it's the same for all of them. They will all have the overlay here, and so it just displays what it's going to look like, you know, whether you race with it or render it. Um, I had the most fun making this template, the Pontiac. It's one of the driving factors why I made the mod in the first place, is I could finally have a uh, better looking modern, you know, um, car tomorrow type uh, Pontiac instead of trying to shove the template on it onto other body mods from other cars or it just didn't work very well um, and so I uh, basically have that I'm gonna move my layer thing over here I put all my tools on my other monitor so you guys can actually see so the top layer is just like the splash screen basically and then we have the notice. This is also going to give you important information. I highly recommend following it. By default, these templates are actually uh, 4096 by 2048, uh, pretty large, and that's so you have an easier time of painting. But it's highly recommended uh, lowering it to 2048 by 1024 and making your pit crews 512 by 512. You don't have to follow these rules, but it would be nice, especially if you're making car sets for the community. Not everybody's going to be able to run 4096 by 2048. But the only reason I, I released the high resolution templates is because it's easier to paint on and you can make nicer renders. And, and through testing, yes, you can race the full resolution version if you want, but I found the template is already so high quality. Personally, unless you're racing in bumper cam, you really can't see the pixels in massive blur anyways, but that's up to you, but you've been warmed, it's been put here. All the templates will also list what make it, what, what make the manufacturer was painted on, and what body it should go on in the car, so uh, that's important stuff there. I also want to take a moment just to mention that I am doing this tutorial slash overview in Affinity Photo, which I, I think it's a great, it's a pretty new paint program that's been getting better and better over the years, but I dropped Photoshop for it. I think it's much better in a lot of aspects, but I have provided in the downloads Affinity Photo, Photoshop, and um, Tom Garrett from Studnot has made uh, Paint Shop Pro versions as well. And there's also a PSD ungrouped. All of them are exactly the same or should be in terms of uh, the folders, except for the ungrouped. That is for people who are using another paint chrome program that may not be very friendly with folders like this. So all the layers will just be expanded. You'll have to group them yourself. That's mainly for people who are have pro having problems opening the other file formats in their paint program. They might find it easier using the ungrouped, but there's no difference between them in terms of the order of the layers, just that the ungrouped PSD doesn't have anything in contained folders, which makes it much easier to navigate if you're doing a tutorial on the ungrouped version, unfortunately, but all the layers are literally named the same between the versions, but anyways. So we'll turn that off, and if you're new to painting, this is off by default, I have a help guide. So I've labeled a lot of the key things so you know what these parts, what they're called, or you know what, what you're looking at, because it can be kind of confusing. You know, this is the chassis parts all grouped here, you have the splitter section here and there, uh, you have the bottom flap colors, and then you got others, roof rail tops. Everything's been labeled. I've even put in, which I'm going to go over actually, but I've even put in some information that might be helpful in terms of 
logo and number placement and rotation and stuff like that. But uh, So yeah, you have this help guide. You obviously want to make sure this is turned off before you export, but if you need that extra help or you need to continuously uh, look at it, it's there for you. And then the next folder is the wireframe, obviously. So you have an easier way to uh, guide yourself, basically, if you're uh, trying to angle things up and all that. Um, one thing I do want to mention, no template is going to be 100% accurate or perfect. I've done the best I can in terms of uh, accuracy and deformation. So when you're placing stuff, it's not going to be all crinkled up or, you know, skewed or slanted or stretched. Uh, with that said, you will notice very slight pixel uh, inconsistency. Say you paint a line on this side and you and you put your line over here by flipping it, you know, and then you, you paint your line, you know, to fix or to fit here. You may see that you may have to move this slightly more up or down compared to that, but it's mainly because the geometry on both sides is not 100% the same because you have this 3D gas cap. Uh, and because of that, it kind of slightly, ever so slightly, will make the pixels when unwrapping a little bit different. That's just to keep in mind. Also, the hood and the deck lid, if you like paint some lines, you know, and you paint them to connect here, and then you flip your to your other side, they, they may not line up 100% because the deck lid shell is not like 100% lined up in between, same as the hood. So that's just things to keep in mind. But other than that, I made it the best I could in terms of matching how other templates in terms of consistency over the years did. Another thing to keep in mind, you'll notice on this template, it is the first wide one I think ever made for NASCAR 2003. And that is done because there's all these other details to paint, such as the tires and uh, the other chassis. I know the uh, 2003 uh, Splash and Go mod uh, had chassis, but I think they shrunk it down more, but I made it larger but it's mainly because of all the tire options too i couldn't fit it in a square even a 4096 and that's also why i recommend sizing this down to 2048 by 1024 instead of the full because unlike 1024 by 1024 templates if you remember usually the, the sides only go to like here because then they put the nose and the, the the rear here this takes up the whole top to bottom so you're gaining a lot of, of resolution just from that so that's just to keep in mind but keep moving on and obviously the mask you you want to turn this off before you export but it's like any anything if you don't like the colors or whatever you can always recolor it to whatever you feel works you know not, nothing special there um, but we'll keep it on so it's easier to see the parts moving down here we have the driver folder which is pretty self-explanatory the one big thing is the base color here this is where this is the layer where you can change the the back uh, base color basically. So this is the one that you'll want to use if you want an overall color. And then I highly recommend if you paint any details and stuff, you want to put it under in between the wrinkles and base color, so all the outlines and details aren't being painted over basically. So basically, right above the base colors where you can paint all your your details and lines and stuff for that. And I'm going to skip over this for a uh, last display driver thing. Uh, next is the cockpit uh, nameplate. That's when you pan to the right. You can actually see it when you're driving to the right on the roll bar. But this is basically the layer here. Uh, and again, you have the base color. So then you can, you know, color it whatever you want. And then this logo is placeholder, but this is the spot where you would put your, your logos and stuff. And of course, you don't have to use these other details. You put like a little metal grate and some shading so it looks more realistic. But if you don't like them, you can turn them off. I also put like an indent here. But you can use the whole whole thing if you want. But if you keep in, you want to keep in mind the wireframe, it's basically covering the boundaries before the sides. So uh, it's just extra detail and, and a guide. So basically what the dry or the uh, little cockpit nameplates for. Next we get into the actual car stuff, the car detail. And I have locked a couple of these layers, things like the shading, highlights, roof shading. You don't need to touch these. There's really no reason and I'll 
come back to this about making your own templates why you don't need to same with the outlines ambient occlusion which is extra shading um, and then the one thing that isn't is the roof rail shark fin bottom color that is these pieces these don't you can't actually see these on the car because all the 3d geometry is paintable down here and the reason why it's not with the other category of colored parts is because this needs to be above everything but if you change your roof rail colors i highly recommend you change this to the same exact color so say we make it yellow you know you want to paint your roof rails the same the reason why this is here is uh, at farther distances the geometry of the roof rail disappears and so then this can still appear to give the illusion of the roof rail shark fin lines and stuff that's basically what that's for um and then we come down to gas cap options this is a new feature basically there's a bunch of preset ones i made where you can choose your gas cap more than just american ethanol there i think there's like 24 or something here but i made a bunch of both gas and energy like uh um charging car stations you know like uh I I I I need I can't say that word I need <laughs> and uh, Creasel and we've got all sorts of other you know tons of different caps so you don't have to use these you can even make your own but I've made a, even a blank version and you can paint on it or you can use it as a template or just recolor it if you don't want any sponsors there but basically this is just to give you lots of options to put stuff there. Next, we have uh, every every uh, template will be a slightly different, but for the most part, they all have the uh, the front and the rear logos that you can repaint, both outline versions and not. Some of them have more than others, of course, but uh, the Pontiac has top of the nose, the front bumper, rear that are paintable basically. So that's where you'll find the uh, the, lo the um, text to change if if your base is like white you probably don't want the text white so you can make it a different color next we have the uh, rookie stripes pretty self-explanatory there's even an outline you obviously do not have to use these if you don't like the way they look or whatever but they're there for people who just want to be able to paint fast so you know you can turn the both those off to get rid of them or just keep them there next we have all the grill tape stuff you don't need to worry about any of these except the uh, tape color basically the bottom one and you just overlay choose your overlay color and there you go you got a different uh tape color and if you don't like tape on the grill i personally do i think it adds extra flair to the car uh, when i i always wanted this so i brought it back for my mod paintable tape for the grills um uh, you can keep them on or keep them off, but you'll just you'll want to make sure you turn off shading, highlights, and then there's a, a lower shadow uh, just under just extra, slightly extra detail. But that's basically that. Next, there's two different jack marker options. I believe I will have in the future a template add-on that you can download to give you more marker options, just extra stuff you can add to your templates if you want. But basically, I made a line version and arrow line. Uh, just to start um, oh i'm turning off the wrong thing that's why um, so that's where you can put your jack markers and where they get placed and you can see they are under the outline so they're actually looking like they're 3d so it's always recommended if you're going to add stuff to your template you should probably try and put them in the same areas that the other stuff exists so the parts actually look like they're on the car not floating above it but anyways uh, next there's just the tear-offs if you want to change the colors, I kept the layers separate so you can, but you don't have to. Just I, all the details that you want, because this, this is meant to be a customizable, fictional mod for you to do what you want. And then these have been locked, but they're just the uh, the, the tear-off uh, clear part and the, the shading for it, so got that. And then we have the front series banner, and then we have a placeholder rear. Now, of course, you can make your own, recommend it too if you're doing your own series. Um, to do that, you'll create a high resolution straight text and then you can bend it however you want. So the way I did this is I actually used GIMP. That's the render. I'll get to that in a bit. And so you can see I have a name that I already made. 
And then you want to go up to Filter, Distort. It has Curve Bend. And I made my own um, uh, preset, but you can, it's pretty easy to make one. But basically, you can see the profile is bent here. So what you want to do is you just want to upper and lower. It'll make a bend that's ever so slightly. And then you, you know, process it. And you, I made it made a working copy. And then I'd save this out. I'd come back into my program. One thing I love about Affinity Photo is on this layer I can do replace image. I don't even have to do the work to bring it in basically. But then I'll go to that spot. And then you can see I have the curve name. I have a bunch of curve names. I was helping people get their names for the car set. And then there you go. And you, if you don't have, if your program can't do that easy, you know, obviously import, but it's highly recommended to use a slight curve because these pieces are curved. But that's basically how you can do that for it. So, one last thing. Oh yeah, and then hood pin tape color. So these little black things, you can do a color overlay again. And, you know, color it. So, big deal. So that covers all the car part stuff. Next we move on the parts for the most part. I'm going to skip over most of these because these are not things you really need to paint at all. They're, they're just all been compressed down as much as they can in terms of stuff. It's recommended not to uh, touch any of this. Um, but you do have the like the banner piece as well for the, the sponsors. Which I suppose I could have rasterized this to, but whatever. Uh, but all the pieces are here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is if you are making your own template, um, you the inspection sticker, you can unlock this and move it if you have a bigger logo that you need to move it to the side. But for the most part, everything else here is just the parts, just like you would see on other mods that you don't really change. But uh, you can see uh, all the amount of detail and work that had to go into it um, for that stuff. And... Um, all the, the Pontiac parts themselves, and then the, the hood uh, scoop parts are down here too. So. Then we have B-pillar sets. Again, these are just for people who want to paint quickly and don't really care about doing their own. You don't have to use these, obviously, but I thought it would be nice to include. I made eight different versions for you, so you can just choose whichever ones you want. Same with the contingencies. So I made uh, a, a car logo, so you can kind of get an idea where you would want to place it to work, and then I have separate uh, contingency sets just out of the box. So if you want to paint quickly, you got stuff. But I am assuming 90% of the people out there are going to make their own sets, obviously, for their series. That's kind of the whole point, but this is just for people who want to paint cars quick and aren't really concerned about the super tiny details, but that is that. Okay, next! This is where the real fun and the customization comes. It's the tire section. So by default, Goodyear is on. You can see there's like, I think 25 I made for this. 25 different tires versions you can choose. And even within these, some of them have alternate versions you can see. So I can turn this one off, choose this version. I've got a different rim, rim detail. And then tire logo, got like a white version or red. So you can check out all the ones in here and see the different variations. These are obviously here for you to use, but if you want something else, you totally can. These are not uh, mandatory by any means. Nothing is on this template. It's, a lot of these are things that I wanted to make for my own, but you can do your own thing as well, of course. But I may even release in the future even more tire packs for you to download that you can add into your templates if you want even more. But I suspect some people will only use one of these for the entire series, or you may want to do what I, what I like to do, have tire wars, but um, it's just one of the unique things to do. Uh, before moving on, though, I'm going to show, if you want to make your own, how you actually do it. Um, actually, before I do that, I should talk about some of these, you'll see the detail goes all the way across. It even goes into like these other, piece, uh, other textures, like the text and stuff. So what you want to do is... In the tires folder, there is a hide wheel details. You want to turn this on for them. So you can see it gets rid of those extra things. And so I, I recommend using this for the ones that cover. So that's what you would use. I'll get back to the rest of those things. But okay, so real quick for the tires, I'm just going to make a new folder here. 
called new group in Affinity, but um, then I'm going to take the text tool. We're just going to call this cool tires. That's what our brand. You can import logos or whatever you want. You can make up your own tire brands. That's that's the, the beauty of this. And I'm going to choose something that looks a little better. Okay. And just so we, it's a little easier to see when I start blurring this stuff. We're going to give it a very big yellow outline. Okay, that's good enough for this. So let's just say this is our logo. This is what it looks like. Put this in here. So the first thing you want to do, this right here is your zero speed tire. This is basically what you see when the car isn't moving or it's going super slow. So uh, I'm going to rasterize real quick. So it's just, it's flat layer. This is actually upside down. So uh, you'll want to, and the reason why they're not just all facing straight up is because um, in terms of to fit everything on the template, it's much easier if I, because it doesn't really matter if it's upside down or not. Um, I mean, in Affinity Photo, I can actually rotate my entire canvas if you're and i'm sure you can do this in photoshop too but um i'm sure there's a faster way to do this i don't even use this very often but um if it really bothers you that it's upside down this doesn't actually affect exporting your images i should mention but there you go and i haven't actually flipped it over but um whoops we're in the wrong layer um if it was but you know i'm just going to do it upside down because that's how i'm used to it so for the the speed one tire, it is upside down, so I'm gonna actually make a copy of this so I don't have to rotate it again. But anyways, you will want to rotate this guy. So any logos or text you want to put them in here, I recommend spacing it between the little uh, indents. If you go too far out, it starts to really deform, then it's too large anyways. But uh, then you want to copy it or put if maybe you have another brand name you want to put but for this example we just got two tires or two of the same brand then what i do is i'll just group these up make a copy of this then you go to the uh, medium speed which this is actually facing upright so we're just going to rotate this back and then you need to size it down a bit because this is a smaller version of this. So, it, and because it is blurred, you don't have to be nearly as accurate because you're not going to see it that much anyways. So I kind of, I usually kind of line it up between around this middle section here, but you just kind of eyeball it, just make sure it's smaller. And then I come back to this because it's already upside down. I bring it here. And I size this down. This is your this is your high speed version, so you can kind of see the, the indents there already. I kind of, I like to put it within that space. Okay, so this one you you would basically be finished already. And with medium speed, I rasterize again or whatever your program does. Um, and I use um, the filter motion blur. Your program may have something similar. I usually do about, you know, 30 to 40. So it's just slightly, what you want to make sure is you don't go off the edges though. You just kind of make it almost impossible to read at this point, you know, something like this. And then I'm just going to flatten this because we don't need to touch it again. If you, if you have different colored version of the tires, obviously you don't want to flatten it yet, but we're just having one version. Then we go down to this one. This is where we get super aggressive. So I go to 100. What I'll actually do is I'll copy this again, and then I'll move it slightly over, because I want it to be covering the whole thing, and then I'll copy it again. So then we just have a straight line. And it's up to you how intense you want it, but usually I just make it the whole thing. And then I'll bring all these together, I'll rasterize trim, you also want to make sure you cut off this section so it's not painting over your chassis. And there you go, you're done. That is literally how to make a new tire, basically. And you've got a new thing. Um, so before I move on, just to show you, I'm going to export. 
and we can keep full resolution because I'm not uh, doing a uh, putting into the game yet, so it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to keep the same name. Okay, and then whatever 3D or car viewer or whatever program you're using, you go into it. I actually have a Marmoset tutorial. That's what I'm using here, but um, go in here. You'll find your texture. Boom, there you go. You've got your own tires, and obviously you can do much more than what I did, but uh, you'll probably almost, you'll never be this close in racing racing view to see it, but there you go, you got cool tires. Obviously, you can also use the GIMP bend tool to make a, a tire rim. There's nothing too special, it's just the decal that's bent or however you want to do it, but that's how you add, add things to your tires. Uh, the next part is the actual tires, not the logos. So you have the tire tape, which you can color. I recommend using like a hue saturation um, thing like this. So it just changes the hue, and I'll actually want to put it on the tire tape itself. So then I can change, you can change the tire tape. It's this part, this part, and just that little section in the hub, but that's basically how you can change the tire tape. Then you have the rim line color that a lot of mods have. It's just a rim by default that I made it go to the Goodyear, but you can color it whatever you want. So, you know, that's how you do the rim color. And then you have the lug nut color, and so you can change the lug nuts. Again, you'd use a hue saturation, just change the value. There you go, you got different colored tires, or lug nuts. And then there's just the hub, you don't need to worry about this. It's the uh, little section here that sticks out. Uh, the shading, don't need to worry about it. I already went over the high wheel details. And just, these are all the extra... Uh, shading and things you don't need to worry about, but the base color, do an overlay, and you can give yourself a different color base. It's recommend don't make it too bright because then it kind of washes out stuff. Even with white, I kind of make it off white, but say we're going blue or something, I don't make it 100% saturation. It looks kind of tacky, so I kind of keep it slightly de desaturated, but. Something, you know, whatever. So there's there's how you do that. And then if we just export again real quick, just to show you. All these textures you're seeing are a lot of the ones I made for the mod itself. Just in a general export folder. And there we go. So then we just recolored the rim line and the uh, uh, wheelbase itself. But that's how you do that. So not too hard. It's just a bunch of recoloring this stuff. And then last, we have all the colored pieces in a group. You can even recolor the uh, um, track bar things. But all of these, including the roll bar for the... Um, interior and the exterior so this is your cockpit roll bar, bar color when you're in the cockpit mode and then what you see in exterior obviously you, you would want these to be the same color because that'd be kind of weird if it looks blue on the outside and it's yellow when you go into cockpit mode but you could do that if you want it'd be kind of bizarre but um these are all defaulted to a slight black but you can basically go in here no change it what I like to do, say I, I want to recolor all this stuff, I'll just select all of them basically. Just go paste effects. There we go. Export this guy again. I know why it's not auto. There we go. It's usually supposed to auto load in a marmoset, but what happens if I go back too fast while it's still saving the file, it doesn't recognize it, but yeah, so there, that's how you can get all your colored pieces. One of my favorite things to do in mods was always make all these cool colored pieces. So I obviously made sure that all this stuff could be colored. Um, there are more colored pieces, of course, too. Now, I don't recommend, if, if maybe your series has different banner colors, but you can color the base uh, banner as well. I usually keep it black, but yeah. 
And then last but not least, the color base. So you can change the flap base color to whatever. You can change the chassis, which will all be all these pieces together. And then you have obviously the base color. You can make it whatever you want. This is also the spot that I will mention is where you probably want to paint all your uh, your de details, you know, your lines and pen tool and basically your base. You want to put all of that there. Um, so it's under all the parts, so the parts are actually covering over it like they should and stuff. One thing I want to go into is with a completed one, this is what a completed template would look like. So just to give you an overview, all my uh, details for the paint scheme are all here just above the base color. So I recommend that's where you put all your painting stuff so it's under everything else. For car numbers and sponsors, I put these uh, right above the B pillar and right below the parts. Um, and I do that because that way, you know, things like contingencies and stuff are not going to get covered over by accident. Um, but, you know, as long as the ordering is okay, it, it probably doesn't matter too much. I just like to put them right under parts because then I know they're going to be overlaid in terms of shading and the detail and stuff. But quickly, so for the numbers, as the uh, the help guide up here shows, that I have the number slightly slanted. I usually do one to two degrees and uh, spacing wise kind of just slightly above here and uh, below there to give room. So you want to usually rotate your numbers. Same with the sponsors. Got to find where I put those. Oh, there we go. And so I rotate that. I've also found you don't need to really rotate the ones right here, but on the quarter panel, Back here, the, the rear quarter panel. Um, I've also found slightly rotating these logos as well to line up with the uh, the stuff seems to work and look much better than just totally straight. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, I believe that's all for that. Now, in the future, I will have template add-ons. And so things like this is actually something I painted on extra is this shark fin uh, front bumper area, which I'll actually show here, my painted car, uh, Trailblazer. So these are all the cars that I painted for the mod for the car set. But you'll see I actually, I'm actually going to release this as a template add on just the um, basically front, front splitter colored parts so and not the whole part, just the front. But anyways, if you have get any add-ons like that, I highly recommend putting them uh, with the other ones. So you can see here, I, I'll have it obviously named something else when I release it, but I recommend putting things with each other um, in terms of consistency so nothing's overlapping incorrectly. Uh, same with if you get new tire brands to add to the template, you should add them with the tire brands. Uh, if you get like more gas cap options or whatever, you should stick them with that, you know, try and put everything with each other. So and then when you export, you don't have any issues. Uh, one last thing I want to mention on the template is I also included some metallic layers. Usually you can just have metallic base on, but then you can have some depth. So it's a bit darker in certain areas. And then you can have detail, which kind of pumps it up. You can have them all on or just a couple. But by default, I've got three different variations of metallic already out of the box that are included too. Okay, so that is for painting on a pre-made manufacturer, but now say you want to do make your own. I have included, you do not want to use these. You don't want to cut them up and repaste them. What you want to do is you want to open up. Oh, that was the export that I made already. I guess opened up too much stuff. So there's the default template pack you can open up. And so it'll look just like this. 
There's one for each make. The, the main difference between these is in the car parts, the shading highlights, good shading, and ambient occlusion is completely 100% all over. Let me turn this off. So these have been these are unedited uh, shading and highlights because on these other ones I have specifically cut out the shading and all the parts. So that's why you don't want to use these templates is the shading has been also edited to look the best for this specific manufacturer. So you want to use these to paint your new manufacturers on. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of how much skill you have to make them, you know, results will vary, but um, you can see from the ones I made, you can make some pretty decent stuff. Um, you may have to do some rotations and stuff, obviously, but for the most part, it's not too hard. Um, like for an example, very quick, say this is a hood, hood light, or headlight, or whatever. Uh, get rid of the stroke. Very bad headlight, but um, when you're done with all your parts and stuff, it's recommended you put them in the parts folder at the very top here and then you want to flatten them which uh, we're just gonna do a very quick test and actually recolor this so it's a bit easier to see for YouTube as well I'm also gonna I'm gonna put it over the bumper parts just so you can see a demonstration so then when you're done with all your pieces, whatever, you want to flatten them, rename them, put them in the parts. And then you want to make a selection from the layer. And then you go up to highlights, hit delete, shading, hit delete, hood. Oops, I actually deleted the layer. And then you want to uh, do hit the delete and ambient inclusion. And then what you can see is now the shading is not affecting your hood parts. And because then whatever shading you do on these, it will uh, look the best. Now, if you want to get uh, results like mine where I have highlights and shading, very quick crash course, because I could go make a whole video on this in the future. But, but uh, before you rasterize, you're going to have uh, separate layers for your parts, your high highlights, and shading. But basically highlights are usually, and these, these are also ones you'd want to, uh, that you don't have to worry about uh, deleting, it's just the part pieces, but uh, say this is our highlights. Highlights are usually white. This is also very bad looking, but just to show you. And then shading is usually black. This way, so when you paint your car, base color, no matter the uh, color it is, it won't completely get rid of your, your outline that you put around your part because it can look better or worse if you only did one or the other. Um, but things you can do on this is, you wouldn't make it this dramatic, obviously, but doing slight blurs is what I, how I did it very quickly, of course. I also would use paint with the pen tool and a uh, thing and then use an eraser and erase if I needed that type of thing. But um, then I would rasterize these things. Again, very bad right now. This is very quick. And then for the white part, I use uh, lighten. I usually would make it like anywhere between 20 to 30 percent opacity. And then I would use multiply again, like. 20 to 30 percent or something you know just so you have that type of uh, very slight detail basically that's how you can uh, do things obviously way better on a template that I'm actually doing the work on but uh, you can you get the idea how you can do that extra punch to your part pieces but uh, that basically covers that now I've gone over everything in here except the driver display interface. This is basically the part that, if you use it, it shows up in the game. 
again, you can paint whatever you want. I, by default, made the hero kind of a gradient color, but you can recolor this a, a solid color, or you can do your own gradient. It really doesn't matter, but by default, it's just blue. So that's where that piece is, and then you have the top. And I have a little template here. I even made a little outline if you want to use it. What I found is I just put a car number and the car, the driver name and maybe a sponsor, but you can use it however you want. I mean, we can uh, go here and get rid of these things. Keep that actually. Do some like, you know, NASCAR Thunder type of deal here if you wanted. Because these are individual per uh, the uh, the cars and their templates, so you can put anything you want. But if you wanted, you could do something like this. And then you could, uh, maybe it's your teammate or something. You know, uh, something like the NASCAR Thunder, where, you know, you get close to cars. And all your ally drivers are, got an alley, ally uh, driver display, and then anyone who's neutral, you make a neutral color, and you get the idea. I'm just showing you kind of uh, examples, basically, of just, you know, whatever you want to do with these this part, you can do it. And so then, you know, you say you're done with it. I mean, you could put a car number two to make it look better. I'm, this is very crash course quick, but um, you can see, you can paint, you could put all you know, all the champions, or maybe have a special event, so certain driver display interfaces have something else, or maybe you use this to calculate or put you know who's uh, in the chase currently and who's out, you know, so you don't do anything with it. You know, uh, it's it's there for you to play around with. So I'm really excited to see uh, what people do with it. But um, for me personally, I'm probably going to put a car number, a driver name. I might I might have my own ranking system, so I might put something there, but. Uh, whatever you want to do. One thing to keep in mind though is because this is a permanent part of the car until you change it, when you export these and share your cars with people, if people start collecting all the cars from different spots and they race with the digital display interface, obviously all the cars will have different information on it so it may look a little weird. So you, if you do plan to make a car set, it's recommended to use this consistently so then we, either you or someone else uses your car set, it looks uniform, you know, it, maybe there's another way to display it so it doesn't look as weird, but uh, it's recommended you uh, use this uniform. Or if you paint it one way for your own thing, but then you want to share the car, maybe use the generic uh, pieces here, I recommend. Uh, so that way uh, everybody can have the same thing, but... Uh, it's it's honestly whatever you want, but that's just one thing to keep in mind, consideration for uh, for others when they're racing. If they use this, you may want to make sure you paint um, something that makes sense. Okay, so that is it for the template. If you have any more questions or concerns, you can leave a comment or, or whatnot, but I think this covers everything. This is already a pretty long video. There is one other thing that I wanted to go over. It's this quads thing which I said in my overview for the mod that I would talk about in here, so that's this. Quick rundown, this is the option in here in the mod for the graphics display. I have opened the Affinity Photo version. Uh, again, you'd make a MIP that you'd export, and then you'd copy into the main directory, and that's how you get this. And so labeled here is where you do it. When you export, you want to have all this stuff off except what you, you make, of course. So as an example, and there's even a wireframe, it's still within the bounding box, but I even have instructions down here. But for an example, whoops, if we go to just a logo or whatever, you see, you just put your stuff wherever you want. You can either use this or not, or you can fill them all up or only fill up one. It's just showing you what you do. You turn everything off, then you'd export this just as with that with the transparency. 
So you'd go into your game here and you'd copy the MIP right into the directory and there you go. You That's how you use this template basically. So the main thing to remember is these are all guides essentially, but you want to turn all this stuff off and just keep your logos basically at, with the MIP when you export as a TG or whatever to WinMIP too. So that is basically that. Um, I want to thank everybody who helped uh, on test these templates for me before it came out. It, they definitely put in a lot of input in how to make things paintable or what was working or little bugs. So uh, hopefully you will enjoy painting on these templates. I've tried to make them the best I can and the easiest to paint on. Obviously there will be some parts, especially like on the make three, the nose is more curved. So you'll have to do a little more work, but overall, hopefully you'll have fun painting on them and they won't be a complete pain. I really look forward to seeing all the uh, uh, paint schemes people make and car sets and their own unique series with all this stuff. It should be a lot of fun. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.